He says, now the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Next verse. I will make you a great nation. Please take note of what God said here. I will make... Now, God was talking to one man. The man's name was what? The man's name was what? I need all your attention, please. God was talking to one man, Abraham. And he says, I will make you, this man, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Next verse. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And take note of this. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Take note. God started with one man. I says, look, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you great, right? I will make you a nation. And then he said, and in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, the extent of the blessing or promise that God gave Abraham, which is predicated on his obeying God. Are you following what I'm saying? Is that all the families of the earth will be affected by this one man. What a blessing. God called this man. I said, come, follow me. Leave your father's house. Leave everything. Just come, follow me. And I will bless you. I will make you great. You will be a blessing. And I will so bless you that in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, the moment God made that declaration, the only person that can confidently say, I can touch all the families of the earth is God himself. Do you know that? Do you know that? God didn't say, I will use you to produce seed that will fill all the families of the earth. No. He says, in you, I'm going to bless all the families of the earth. So the only one who had the, the, the ability and right to bless everybody on the earth is God himself. Well, let me show you something in Romans chapter 4 and verse 13. Romans chapter 4 and verse 13. Um, let me, let's read from verse 12. Let me see. I'll show you something. Okay, 13. Let's, let's, let's just go to 13. For, watch this now. For the promise that he shall be the heir of the world. Take note of that. The promise that he shall be what? Of what? Heir of the world. Did you get that? Do you know what an heir is? Huh? Huh? An heir to the throne. Right? An heir, one who's going to take over. Right? Like um, you had Queen Elizabeth, then you had Prince Charles. The moment Queen Elizabeth died, what happened? The heir, who was Prince Charles, took over the throne. So Prince Ar and Charles was heir to the throne of England. You know, you understand what I'm talking about? So it says, for the promise that he, Abraham, would be the heir of the world. So God actually wields the earth, the world, to one man. Not Adam. Who? Abraham. Now watch this. Eh? For the promise that he would be heir of the world was not made to Abraham or to his seed, to the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now, see, I, I'm going to be touching a lot of things. And I pray we stay on course. Because, you know, many times, lots of lies that people have, because they lack understanding, you know, so they just mumble everything up. So I'm going to try to straighten things out today. So now we find there that there is a promise that Abraham will be what? Heir of the world. Now, if Abraham is going to be heir of the world, what that should give you an idea that God actually wields the whole earth to him. Right? Talk to me. God wields the earth to him because the earth is the... The earth is the... 
the earth is the so the owner of the earth now said Abraham is an heir of the world okay now now let's jump to verse I don't want to go into all those law and faith give me verse 16 therefore it is of faith that it may be it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed maybe we should read verse 15. oh um let's start from that um, 13 again let's start from that 13 and go down gradually so for the promise that he will be the heir of the world was not to abraham and all to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith. Now, what does it mean, the righteousness of faith? How did, how did God promise Abraham? He spoke to Abraham, right? He spoke to him. He says, Abraham, leave your father's house. Come, follow me, and I will make you great, right? Now, that statement was a statement of faith, okay? So then he's telling us that that promise was not through the law but through the righteousness of faith. I'll explain that to you next verse. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Next verse. Because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Uh -huh. Next verse. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Now, God who gave the promise to Abraham was not just thinking of only Abraham. He was thinking of Abraham and his seed. Are you following me? So God now said, look, this thing is not going to be according to the law, but according to faith. When he says according to faith, what was he referring to? The same way I spoke to Abraham, because what is faith? The Bible says faith cometh by and hearing the voice of God, right? Now, he says Abraham got it by hearing, right? And God said this thing is not going to be, the promise is going to be by faith. It's not going to be according to the law. What that means is this. If the promise is going to be according to the law, so it's going to be anybody who's able to do the law will go and stand and say, okay, I've done the law. Give me the promise. If that is the case, Satan might hijack it. But you don't understand what I'm talking about. If it has to be something that you will qualify for. And you understand what I'm saying? So God in his wisdom made this promise not to be something that you qualify for, but something that is done of faith. Now replace what faith is. Something that is done by, by hearing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now that's how God sealed this promise he made to Abraham. That it's going to be by faith. Not by the doing of a physical law but by faith, okay? So therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. So any seed who cannot hear cannot receive the promise. Are you get what I'm saying? Good. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Praise God. Now, here we find out that that same promise was given. He was referring to that promise. And then he now says, look, the promise was to extend beyond Abraham and to his seed, right? Now, let's go to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 25. Uh, Peter speaking here and admonishing the people. He says, you are now watch this. It says, you are the sons of the prophet and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now this is Peter speaking. This is Peter speaking. And then he was admonishing the people and said, hey, you are the sons of the prophet and of the covenant. Now, letting them know that there is a covenant. So he says, you are the sons of the prophet. Maybe we should read some verses before this. Give me verse 23. Verse 
Okay, now it says, and it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Next verse. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. Next verse now. You are sons of the prophet and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed praise god the promise started with abraham and god walked with abraham as abraham obeyed god and followed the instruction that god gave to him okay abraham gave back to who isaac and do you know god visited isaac by faith Isaac didn't get the promise just because he was the child of Abraham. No. Isaac got the promise when God visited him and said, look, I will bless you. The same word he spoke to his father. He said, I will bless you. Are you following what I'm saying? Then Isaac gave back to Ishmael. Uh, Isaac gave the, uh, Abraham actually had Ishmael and Isaac. You know the story, right? But you see, because the word of God came to Isaac, that's how we know that it was Isaac that God selected in that generation. Are you following what I'm saying? Then Isaac gave birth to two sons, Esau and, Esau and Jacob. But then among Esau and Jacob, the word of God came to Jacob by faith. The word of God came to Jacob. You know the story. When Jacob left home and then he slept, he made one stone, his pillow, and slept. And then he received revelation from the Lord. And God spoke to him in that, that night. I said, look, I am the God of your father, Abraham. And everything God said to Abraham, God said to Jacob. Why? The promise came to Jacob by, by faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So that's how, and then God established that covenant in Jacob. And that's how he changed his name to Israel. And we still have a nation called Israel till this day but remember i told you this like two weeks ago but remember the vision of god and the promise of god is that through you and your seed all the families of the earth will be blessed so god was not looking at one nation he promised abraham i will make you a great nation right right do you think israel is as a nation is a great nation talk to me now do you think israel is a great nation so has god's promise been fulfilled has God promised been fulfilled? Now, when you talk about Israel, you talk about Abraham. All Israel know that we are the children of Abraham. Are you getting what I'm saying? So did God make Abraham's name great? Did he make his name great? He made his name great, so he has fulfilled that promise. He made him a nation, right? Has he fulfilled that promise? No matter how people try to destroy the nation of Israel, it's still standing till this day. Praise God. And God told them, I will bless. Maybe we should go back there. Genesis chapter 12. I want to show you something. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Chapter 12, verse 2. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Is Israel, do you think Israel is a blessing? Talk to me. Israel is a blessing. They sell great technologies to the world. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. Anybody who curses you, I will handle them. What people don't understand is, you know, people, you know, some, I hear people say, hey, even the Israel, they are all sinners. They are, you think God is looking at that? God is looking at his word to faithful Abraham. They are the product of a faithful man that got that obeyed God. When God looks at Israel, you know what he sees? He sees the obedience of Abraham. 